Joining us now, Liz Young, SoFi's head of investment strategy. It's good to have you back. Good to be uh, here. He wasn't the only one who sounded kind of hawkish today, right? Lori Logan is, right. as well. And there's been some others recently, too. Do you think we're underestimating how resolute the Fed is going to be and how sticky inflation might be? Well, I don't know that they even sent that resolute of a message last time. I think they opened up the flexibility to do a pause if they saw fit. I think actually what's going to happen, and, and to be fair, I do expect a pause in June, but I think what's going to happen is we enter this sort of high and hold portion of the cycle, mm -hmm. but the votes are no, no longer unanimous. We've had a lot of unanimous votes up until we now. We haven't had dissents. Right. So I think we're going to start having them. Right. Mm. And they may not yet be ones that push it in the other direction. I think Jerome Powell still kind of rules the roost in that regard. And whatever he wants to do is what will happen. But if you get closer to kind of a 50 50 or real debates on the Fed, then they could get really interesting. And I think I've mentioned on the show before this big gap between what the market thinks and what the Fed is saying is going to happen leaves us open for big movements in either way, depending on what the narrative is. So the major cautious view that I've heard recently, and I want your opinion on it. Um, the worst is still yet to come in terms of regional banks because of problems with commercial real estate. We haven't, those haven't really manifested yet as, as it relates to CRE. The economy is going to slow further. Job losses are going to accelerate, which is finally going to hit the consumer. Inflation is going to be much more sticky at this moment. Right, getting down from five percent down to the to to the target of, of two, mm -hmm. and that's going to cause the Fed to be a lot more hawkish and continue to do whatever they have to do, and that's going to be a problem for earnings and stocks. How do you re how do you respond to that? I mean, I I think it's all fair. I I don't know that the Fed needs to necessarily be that much more hawkish in their movements. They could be hawkish in their tone. Well, if they hike and, if they hike in June, yeah, okay, that takes it incrementally more hawkish. Sure. And then if they lead us to believe, you know what, the meeting after that's live too. That's hawkish. Well, I mean, to be fair, they haven't they haven't admitted that they're considering cuts this year. So well, I still gonna. think I still think hawkish is is a fair way for them to act. But if we're looking at a scenario where they've said all along we need to get to sufficiently restrictive and then we want to hold rates at sufficiently restrictive by any definition we're restrictive right now we've got a fed funds rate that's above inflation regardless of the measure we've got a fed funds rate that's above the 10 year so we're at a restrictive level i don't think that another 25 basis points is going to be suddenly the thing that says okay that's it that's restrictive enough i think we are right in the window not not i think i know we are right in the window of when long and variable legs of monetary policy start to actually have an effect on the economy. 12 to 18 months is about that window. They started hiking rates in March of last year. So mm -hmm. here we sit in that 12 to 18 month window. Stuff has started to break. I don't know that the regional the regional bank thing is going to be the, the next headline that's going to occur again. Commercial real estate, yes, I think is another symptom, but it's a symptom of credit tightening. And I think that credit tightening is going to take a few different tones. So you're looking at not enough money available to small and mid-sized businesses to finance their growth, to invest in their business. You're looking at default rates on credit cards ticking up. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the default time or the delinquency time passing the 90-day mark, right? That's all sort of in the same bucket to me. And we're going to continue to see credit tightening and we're going to continue to see a deterioration in consumer credit. Sure. And I think that's the next big But headline. you do have to believe that at some point write downs are, are more than likely going to happen as it relates to the value of commercial real estate where it is sure. today versus sure. where it where it was. Yeah. And that, that's going to be something to watch. Now, I would say, OK, for those of you who put forth the cautious checklist that I just read and say, well, what could make you wrong? It's OK. Consumer hangs in longer yep. than we think. Yep. And the Fed caves and the Fed caves yeah. in part because it's an election year and it's going to be really hard to stimulate accelerating job losses in an election year. And that's something to keep your eyes on, too. Yeah, so there, I think there's there's a couple of things that could actually turn a bear bullish, right? And and I've certainly been on the cautious side of the equation. If the consumer does hang in, it has to be supported by the labor market. And the labor market so far has been decently supportive of that. You can also look at something like housing that's been decently supportive of that. People are still willing to buy homes. Mm -hmm. There's still a decent amount of demand out there. And the entire industry is still support, supporting employment 
in that sector. So that could help as well. And then the other thing is, you know, if you look at just what consumers are spending on, they're still willing to travel, right? These are good things. The last CPI report showed services inflation coming down. That's the big thing for me. If that comes down and continues to soften, that does make me more optimistic.